Hello there. Today we're going to be doing Act 17. If you missed the last one, go and check it out and then come back and you'll be up to date. So to start off with, Paul and Silas, they went to Thessalonica to preach in the synagogue. They went to preach to the Jews about Jesus, uh, telling them that he's the Messiah. They, they had to like uh, prove it through the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, and some of them believed it, but other Jews, they got angry. They formed a mob and started to riot through the city, uh, trying to find Paul and Silas. Uh, they couldn't find them, so they kind of like riled up the crowd and got them all angry as well. Got them, told them about what Paul and Silas had been doing. Uh, told them that uh, they're defying Caesar's decrees by saying there's another king called Jesus. Uh, and then Paul and Silas went to Beria so they could uh, preach in the synagogue there as well. And the the Jews at Beria, they were like, they were of more noble character than the ones in Thessalonica because they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if it was what Paul said was true. Because of this, many believed. Uh, because they, they studied the scriptures, so many ended up believing because they figured out that it was true. It was true what Paul and Silas were saying. Well, the Thessalonica Jews, they found out Paul and Silas were in Berea, so they obviously went over there trying to find them again. They riled up the crowd in Berea as well, so there's loads of people just angry at Paul and Silas just because he was, he was, they were like preaching the gospel. Um, so then Paul and Silas, they went to Athens, and in Athens, Paul was a bit upset because they were all like uh, worshipping false gods and idols. Um, so what happened was, um, he went to the synagogue to reason with them and there was this, this guy, this philosopher, he was like, oh, what's this babbler trying to say? And then there was this, uh, the other people were like, um, he seems to be advocating foreign gods because he was talking about Jesus and the resurrection. Um, and then also the, just the Jews in Athens didn't really know what he was talking about. They didn't understand. So they asked him to like explain it to them. So he said this, um, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very rel religious for as I walk around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the whole world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in, his, in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him through, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of our own poets said, uh, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day where he will judge the world with justice by man, uh, by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone, um, yeah, to everyone by raising him from the dead. And uh, yeah, when they heard about the resurrection, some of them like sneered and others like became believers, but then a lot of them also, again, they didn't understand it, so they asked Paul to explain it again and that's kind of basically act 17 there's some things we can get from this all right so the first one is not everyone's going to accept the gospel right so as you see uh, as you heard paul like preached the gospel in Thessalonica, and the jews got angry they got mad they started to riot because just because he preached the gospel it wasn't long after Jesus was actually on earth, like around where they were. And still they don't believe. I don't know if they actually did see them themselves, but uh, yeah, so not everyone's gonna accept the gospel. It's kind of our job to tell it to people, but not everyone's gonna accept it, but at least 
at least they know once you tell them. Um, and the second thing is that we need to study the scriptures when someone, especially when someone like teaches us something, when, when we see like someone preach or like, someone on YouTube or TV or in, just in church, like you can't just like take on what they say as like facts and like just take it on as, and like you gotta like, you gotta research, you gotta like uh, study the scriptures. Like it says for the Jews in Beria, they were noble character because because they received the message with eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Uh, so you could see someone online, like on YouTube or whatever, you could see them on a big stage in front of thousands of people and you'd automatically think that, uh, yeah, these are quite trustworthy, they got loads of people watching them, they, you know, they're going to be seeing some real stuff. But sometimes it's not the case, sometimes people don't really preach fully from the Bible and it can be a bit of a mess so yeah it's really important to just like make sure you're reading the scriptures um, when you hear someone like after you hear someone preach or whatever you make sure you make sure that what they're saying is right and also um, yeah the part where Paul is like saying how like there's an inscription on a statue saying to an unknown god. That's kind of saying that the them Jews don't really know the god that they're worshiping. So another way to get to know God to know God is to read the scriptures and study the scriptures. Um, because if you don't, then you're never going to know who God is really. Yeah, that's kind of God's word. It's God's word that's for us, and it's alive and it can change. It can like transform you if you if you like kind of make it kind of your life and yeah I think that's an important thing like they didn't know God they didn't know the God that they were worshipping but I think reading the scriptures is like the key to that so yeah I hope you, I hope you got something from this and yeah I'll see you next time